A very warm welcome to another episode of Fauza's Diary. If you are looking for something little and yet inspiring, then you have stumbled upon the right show. That's the beauty about my diaries. They inspire us, they encourage us, but also they make us think. Joining me today on this particular conversation is a dear sister friend whom I have known for years. We collaborated together. We've been in panel discussions together. I had the opportunity to have her here on Fauza Diaries. And I'm so excited that she is here with us all the way from Atlanta, United States. A very dear friend, Wendy Alexander. She is an international business consultant. And child, it doesn't even get better because she doesn't just do this thing. She has decades of experience. I call her the middle wife. Is that even a good thing to say? Or is that even good English? I don't know. You figure that out. But that's who she is. She connects. She's a connector. She doesn't see problems. She sees solutions. And that's what I love about Wendy. Wendy, thank you so much, sis, for joining me today. Thank you on so much for having me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Thank you so much. And um, Wendy, you have been in UAE, but now you, you're back home in the United States. How was it for you living in the UAE and working actually in the UAE? Because that's how I met. You know, you used to organize uh, events for... Uh, for international delegations, you know, you connected pieces together, you know, you did coaching, you did trainings, even for government entities here in United Arab Emirates, you you were actually pretty involved here. How was that experience for you? Let's actually start there. I was, I was involved and I was actually involved before I actually decided to um, move to to the UAE, my husband um, started doing some work in um, Afghanistan years ago and introduced me to Dubai. And at first I was like, I don't wanna go there. No one's talking about that place. Cause it was like 22 years ago, nobody, and especially in the United States was talking about Dubai. And the first time I, I, I went there, it's just like, oh, I like it here. And I was like, I think I could start a business here. And he was just like, uh, you sure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I could do that. And then um, a couple of days, you know, I, I, a couple of months later, I decided to hop on a plane and ended up knocking on some doors. And I got my first contract um, doing some training and doing uh, with leadership training there in the UAE. And that's where it all started. And so then when my youngest son, my youngest, which is my son, um, graduated, I was like, I'm going to have a business here. I think I'm going to just do a longer contract and live there. And the day he graduated is the day I got the, the opportunity. And so I'm going to Dubai. I know, right? Talk, speak it. Moved to Dubai, uh, met wonderful people as such as you, and now have become my um, sister, business partner, prayer partner. You know, there's a lot of wonderful people there. Um, it was, it's, it was, it's different to be honest, living in Dubai than the United States. It's, it's a piece that we're not familiar with. Mm. It's, to be honest, um, it's almost like it's not. I tell people it's not really our reality. And so, you know, so living there, you know, having people to come to you with open arms and, you know, wanting to help and support you without not having a dollar amount attached to it was not, I wasn't used to, um, to be honest, uh, to be, able, you know, people's like, oh, no, I'll help you. And I'm just like, okay, how much will it cost? And they're like, what are you talking Don't about? <laughs> right? What are you talking about? So I was like, huh, okay, this is different, you know, and then be able to live without, you know, when I moved into my apartment, I was looking for a security company and they were just like, well, why do you need a security company? And, you know, and I was like, um, well, we guess that's what we had them in the United States. They were like, a security company. And so I was like, okay, you know, so having that peace, you know, of security, you know, we have a lot of, unfortunately, you know, violence that happens in the United States, yeah. um, a lot of political issues, they're like every other country, but they're just out there a little bit more mm -hmm. and in Dubai I found um I found peace um to be I honestly found parts of myself that I didn't know that was introduced mm -hmm. to me good um also I like the fact that I honestly became closer with my faith mm -hmm. and I did I, I came extremely the Middle East really helped me to come closer to my faith. Um, and, and and that's being honest because I had a lot of Muslim sisters. And then, you know, one of the things that they would do is, is that they would 
pray, right? It, you know, five times a day. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to pray five times a day too, you know? And then they would be sit right there, even though we're praying to two different gods, but that's, but that's okay, you know? And, and so it really honestly helped me to be able to do, to really become closer to God. Like I, I I'm grateful for it. Um, mm -hmm. Also just the peace, you know, when I came back home, it was, it was a little culture shock for me to come back into my own community, you know? And so I loved everything about the Middle East. The people still make good connections there. I'm almost a little scared to go back because I was only supposed to stay three months and that turned into eight years. So <laughs> you never know what's going to happen again. So it yeah, so the I, same for everybody though. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, so I, I I really enjoyed it. I did. That's really that's wonderful, Wendy. But I love what you said. It even brought you closer to God. You know, it, it made you connect. It made you. And I have the same too. I actually became a believer here. You know, and it's amazing how God calls us in places where you can't even imagine. Right. And um, I, I think it's really a beautiful thing. But Wendy, I would like for you to share a little bit on why did you choose? Because it was a choice, right? Why did you choose to leave? Because you are doing very well. I mean, you are st still doing this the same because right. you you are an international, you know, a corporation. But mm -hmm. the UAE is the best, you know, where people they get to everywhere, the part of the world so easily. Sure. But you you chose, okay. I'm going to go back to the U.S. Because my husband has been doing uh, work in the Middle East for 20, I don't know, 23, 24 years. And so we have had this global marriage, I would say. You know, he was living in Afghanistan. He would go 90 days, come home 30. Of course, when I lived in Dubai, I got to see him more because it was closer. But mm -hmm. he had been doing it for years. And so we just made the, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm going to what you call retire from working overseas and so let's go back home. And so that was the real reason um, I came back. And so we, I ended up coming back to the States. He retired and now he's home rebuilding, you know, businesses here. Mm -hmm. I still do my global piece of it. Um, that's not really his forte of where he would like to be, <laughs> but you know, he go, he'll travel with me. But, you know, so that's why I came back and it was right before the pandemic hit. So it was actually perfect. Like God honestly could not have timed that better. And I honestly prayed about it because I left before the summer. My I was going to leave in the summer, and he said no in November. Go, and he said you go now, and I was like go now, and I was like right now, like I'm not even prepared to go now and leave. And honestly, I did it. I I did what he told me to do. I made the arrangements, went home, and not even what a month later the pandemic hit. <laughs> the pandemic hit, and we were both home you know, together, you know, my family, all of us together, right when the pandemic hit. And so I thank God for the obedience um, because I it, I know that it would have definitely been a different outcome had I stayed a little longer there, mm. um, to be honest, and then trying to get back home and all of that and, do, you know, so that's the only reason I left. Um, and so, and I also said I can do, you know, the business virtual piece now is there, you know, I'm able to go back and forth, you know, and so um, that, that was the only reason why I left is to come home to to be with my husband and my family. That's a beautiful reason because the family is is the priority, isn't it? Right. Exactly. And um but I love also when you say that you honored the voice of the Lord, you know, so can you imagine if mm. you just kept saying, Oh no, wait for a minute, Lord, I you know, I, I got this figured out. And then pandemic came and we all know what happened. It's not even something I want to go back there to eat really. Praise God that we have freedom now. You know, the things we take for granted that we can even move freely. Exactly, yeah. Oof, we mm -hmm. don't. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. So Wendy, um, I know you are very global. I mean, mm -hmm. I've known you for the long time you are in Dubai because mm -hmm. most of the time when you did your programs, you know, the leadership talks and everything, I would always be there with you, you know, with shared platform. <laughs> and I was very grateful to learn from you, Wendy, you know, your wisdom and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, and the teachings as well. But your heart, it's, you know, for me, it's more your heart than you even giving me the platform to share my story mm -hmm. or whatever, the book or anything, right? What I would like for you to share a bit in that, where are you now? 
because I know you you um you are an amazing person because anything you do is not only about fulfilling you know the superficial things you know it's it's way deeper so I would love for you to share a little bit on what you are doing and see how the people are listening or going to watch later you know how can they also be a part of your movement so two things thank you so much for that and so you know I always believe in serving I, I, I'm a servant I serve first everything comes um, and so you know when it came to like the platform that you were on I'm so grateful for you to be a part of that as well you know, I, I truly believe in helping and, and you know, there was a need, there was a gap. You know, people were coming to me and saying, I, you know, I haven't been able to share my story or, you know, women from the United States saying, you know, no one would give me the opportunity to be a speaker here in the States. And I was like, okay, well then come to Dubai so you can be an international speaker and come Baby, back. Baby, right? come to Dubai. Okay. Okay, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you can leave as an international speaker, you know, so then you tell them that, you know. <laughs> So, so that's what I did. Because remember, that was two events in one that I did for years. And I was just like, God gave me strength. But that was a, that's what he told me to do. And he's like, it's going to work out. And it did. Um, and so I continue to do that, you know, have those events for women, um, def different places, um, different countries and places like that. Um, but also, um, my heart has always been in mental health. And that's a side that people don't usually get to see a lot of, just depending on what platform I'm speaking on. Mm -hmm. But I've done mental health services for over 20, 27 years now, a long time. Um, and so, you know, I've done nonprofits, had my own nonprofits, still have my um, nonprofits at today. And so I truly believe in, you know, helping women um, and children and families dealing with mental health, substance abuse problems as well. And so I also work right now in New Mexico on a contract. Uh, with a child welfare group where we're actually helping them uh, with this called the Kevin S. Settlement, where the state was sued for their mental health services um, mm. to be able to help them um, to really advocate for families and just a better way of a better practice of working with families. Mm -hmm. And so from there, um, I also decided to go to South Africa. Yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and I have to share this because I I hope this will inspire somebody. So I'm the type, as you see, I just jump on planes and just go. When God tells me to go, I just go. And so I woke up one night and he said, okay, I need you to go to South Africa. And I was like, I don't want to buy in South Africa. <laughs> so it's, you know, and then I thought about it. I was like, wait a minute. I do know some people from South Africa that I met in Dubai, you know. And exactly. he's just like, but guess what he said? No, not those people. And I was like, hmm. He said, but I need you to go. And I was just like go he's like with a group of women that you don't know mm. and so I was like, how am I gonna find this group of women that I don't know and so it was like two o'clock in the morning and we have this platform which a lot of people probably heard of meetup.com right and so I went there at two o'clock in the morning and I put in South Africa it came up South Africa group in a uh, leaving no a group in Atlanta leaving for South Africa to go in two months I, I, all the things so I messaged the lady, did not know her. And I said, hi, my name is Wendy. And I just want to know if you still have room, you know, on your trip. Now, mind you, I had no idea what her trip was about. But he told me to go to South Africa. I saw they were gone. She said, sure. I was like, okay. All right, how much is it? I'm going to pay my deposit. Well, the next day I woke up and I was just like, okay, am I, was I dreaming? You know how sometimes you're like, so was I dreaming? Was that really God speaking to me? Let me make sure. And he gave me another. He said, no, I need you to pay today. And I was like, oh, it was him. Let me go pay right now. So I sent her the money. Mind you had no clue about this woman at all. Okay. Sent the that's money. Trust. Okay. Seriously. Like that's nothing but God. Like, and I didn't, I didn't like, this is the thing. I didn't research. A lot of times we research and research and we're trying to, you mm. know, you see, let me look in it. I didn't do any of that. I trusted God. And I was just like, I'm just going to pay it. I don't know about these people, <laughs> but I'm going to pay it. And now I'm going across the world with these people. This ain't nothing but God. But I felt as though, just like Dubai, he told me to go, you know, and he, this mm. is what he told me, you know, he told me to continue to build there. And so when I end up meeting them for the first time in South Africa, mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't even meet them before then. It was three months later. And they were a wonderful group of uh, women. And we end up going on tour. And so because I wanted to have an event in South Africa. And he said, go mm -hmm. there, first learn, you know, about it, see about it. And so I was like, okay, let me look for an event space while I'm there. That was my whole mission was to look for the event space. Mm -hmm. While I was there, he said, no, I want you to open an NGO. And I was like, huh? 
I don't know how to do this. What? Like, what is going on? You know? And then, so of course, I went back to sleep that night. And he's like, nope, you got to do it before you leave. And I was like, before I leave, I'm only here for 14 days. And so I ended up, of course, he had already had the people lined up. I put it out there. That's what I wanted to do. They said, yep, we'll do it. We'll connect you. We'll make sure you have your registration. We even had the office space that we can give you. All of that less than a day. That's what they said. So I got registered in South Africa. From there, I flew to Namibia. Um, and he said there, oh, I need you to start an NGO here too. And I was like, okay, now listen, <laughs> this is like less than five days apart. I said, God, are you really talking to me? This is the Wendy. <laughs> and he said, yeah. Wendy right. Alexander, yes, ma'am. <laughs> right, like, right. That's who I'm talking to. And so he, he sent the people and, you know, and and that's definitely where my NGO is starting. Um, we'll probably be able to real, I mean, of course, South Africa, but Namibia mm -hmm. is definitely in climate. Yeah. But I met mayor there um, of Walvis Bay, who is amazing, um, who has just really said, you know what, whatever you need and what you do, I will partner with you. And, you know, you don't hear that from a mayor, especially meeting them the first time, never talking to them. And I have a T-shirt that I bought him um, that I was launching. And I, I was like, he's not going to wear it. And he did. He wore it. He even wore it to his events and stuff. And um, since then, you know, they've given me um, uh, space to stay, you know, they're part of the training centers, you know, just all kinds of things that have just been given to me because I was obedient, yeah. you know, and I didn't worry about the how. And a yeah, lot of you times, see, sometimes I think people always, always, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. We struggle with the how and mm -hmm. like, it's how are we going to do it? I'm not going to move because I don't know how to do it. I'm fearful of doing it because it's a new thing. About it. this is this was a totally different like I, don't, I didn't know the language, I didn't know the culture. You know, it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. same thing with Dubai. And so I feel like a lot of times we just have to just trust God and take that leap. And and that's what I did. And so it feels like Dubai all over again for me right now with this NGO. So I'm I'm working both of my NGOs, chosen for youth. Uh, women, children, um, and communities. I'm helping them with mental health, substance abuse, but also entrepreneurship because I truly mm -hmm. believe if you can help people have a business, right, and have money, financial support, their their home, their life, mm -hmm. that you also, it will help with their mental health. Wow. Now, I would like us to go deeper on yeah. the NGO, Wendy, but I want us to go back a little bit. Do you feel, because I know you love the Lord so much, you know, like cut, bleeding, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But do you feel your faith has contributed so much in in the way you run your ministry, your business? Because oh, everything we do is service to the Lord. And I know you well, you've been serving wholeheartedly. But for someone who is listening to us now, who they have been wondering of the how, then, you know, what not you know the self-limiting beliefs right would you like yeah. to share a little bit there so that we can tie it in I do I totally believe in that I mean just like everything from me jumping on the plane going to you know knock on doors in Dubai and I, I didn't speak Arabic I didn't even know anything you know all I knew was my husband was there and I was like I went there one time I thought it was great that was all God orchestrated you know even South Africa him telling me to go you know it was him and then he's like don't worry about the how and the people and when I got there I'm looking for event space and it turned into an NGO you know, and so I, I pray, the, you know, about it. I always pray for discernment. And as we talked about, um, and also wisdom and just guidance and, you know, God is your CEO. We get confused about who our CEO is, you know, yeah. sometimes, you know, we'll put it at the top of our org chart. I'm the CEO of my business. You're not, you know. Yeah, and, because we are looking for well done, well done, yeah. eh, well done. Yes. Well done. Exactly. We forget yeah. who has sent us. And who orders our steps, you know. He, he, he has his own business. <laughs> that Bible is your business Bible. That's your business book, okay? And if you follow it, everything else follows through, you know? And so, I like that. you know, we, we, we missed that. And if you really look at a lot of the principles and things in the Bible, it definitely um, will show you that God had, he had, he had a business. Just really, you know, I always encourage people to read it. And, but I always tell people when they say, yes, I'm the CEO of my company. And I was just like, well, that's your first mistake. And I do. I'll say that's your first mistake. You know, God is your the CEO because you have to pray for him to order your steps and you have to pray for him to bring the right people. You have to pray for him to tell you to have mm -hmm. and you have to trust that he would do that and have faith mm -hmm. and not work. So when I was a lot of people ask me, like when I started that NGO, what, what did I was I scared and fearful? 
I was, I've always been excited. Mm-hmm. I've never had fear of peace. I've always been excited and just knew that he was going to provide, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, I have some project going on now and people are just like, I need you to be a part of this. And I used to, I, I'm, I do have discernment, but he said, say yes. And I'm like, knowing that this is going to stretch me, but not only that, it's going to add more to my plate, but I know that he is going to bring everything that I need. So mm-hmm. I'm not worried about it. And so I would say to people who are, who have businesses and who are fearful, you know, who love the Lord and, 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 or whoever they pray to, right. Whatever mm-hmm. God they pray to is that they honestly just really, really understand that that is your CEO. That's mm-hmm. your CEO of your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks, Wendy, for sharing that. We're going to take a brief break and then we're going to come back because I would like for us to dive deeper in the, you know, in the NGO, all the programs and the activities that you are doing because there is always a why behind why we choose to serve, you know, in these different areas using the gifts that the Lord has bestowed upon thee. So we're going to take a quick break and uh, we're going to be back. And for you, if you have just stumbled this conversation, stay with us. We'll be right back with Wendy Alexander, an international business consultant. Stay tuned.